Here is a lung, and here is the cut surface of the lung. You can see the pleural surface along here. You can also see a pleural surface along here. Here's the pleural surface, and here's the cut surface. Whenever you see a fairly well-defined hemorrhagic area, especially at the periphery of the lung, in which it is abutting on a pleural surface, you can probably guess correctly 95% of the time that this is a pulmonary infarct. Infarcts of the lung tend to be very hemorrhagic. Infarcts of the liver also tend to be hemorrhagic because both the liver and the lung have dual blood supplies. So when one air blood supply is cut off, the other becomes hemorrhagic. Organs like the spleen and the kidney, which basically have end arteries, tend to have very anemic or non-hemorrhagic infarcts. And microscopically, you could appreciate the fact that this is lung parenchyma, which is still aerating, but there is a fairly well-defined area now, and once again, this is the pleural surface, isn't it? Infarcts are always, or I, I shouldn't say always, but how about if I say almost always, peripheral. So if you see uh, something in the lung that is hemorrhagic and extends to the surface, it could very well be an infarct. Here's a pleural surface here. Here's a cut part of the lung that still show uh, aerating alveoli. And here is the hemorrhagic necrotic area in question. I guess you could call this hemorrhagic necrosis rather than coagulative or liquefactic necrosis because most of it is blood. But like all other infarcts, you have a very, very hard time recognizing the actual uh, detail of the lung because most of the uh, cells are dead. <coughs> Excuse me. Perhaps if you look closely here, you might recognize the fact that this might be the remnant of an alveolus, and here's a septa, and here's the central portion of the alveolus. But for the most part, uh, this is uh, a dead lung in which you can see no real cellular uh, detail, which would distinguish it as being lung or any other organ. And thank you very much.